Blade Master Wing is a 1 to 12 scale action figure produced by Maestro Union. These characters exist in the fictional Fure planet populated with anthropomorphic animals. He is the third character under this figure line and each one comes with a comic book that gives us an idea of what the character is about. In Chinese poetry and art, tigers symbolize strength and courage and have been associated with majesty and power. I'm here to find out if this figure lives up to those traits. The box had a bit of damage when I got it. This piece here was torn off and is now glued on the wrong place. It's not a big deal for me and I'm just happy that the figure arrived in one piece. Inside the box is a comic book that's around 60 plus pages thick. The artwork is good although the English grammar is wrong in a lot of the pages. There's also a piece of paper saying that you'll have to heat up the parts using warm water or a blower to soften the joints. This is the first time I had to do this in an action figure. Blade Master Wang is secured with rubber bands and at first glance, he looks good. I took off all the armor and other accessories from the main body. The first accessory is a conical hat typically worn by farmers in Asian countries. It has a hole in the center but has great detail with weave patterns on top and underneath. The material is quite flexible and you can put it on simply by resting it on top of Master Wang's head. The extra head has a calm stoic expression. You can see the creases and lines on the face and I like how his beard and hair are detailed. He also has a mane or fur part for his neck and you can put it on by popping the head off the ball joint. Putting this on would somewhat limit the neck articulation. He comes with a pair of opened hands as if ready to claw at you. He also has three extra pairs of hands you can swap. You can see the veins on each hand and that's a nice touch in terms of detail. He comes with closed fists, sword holding hands, and a pair of kung fu hands all with the same level of detail. He has a pair of feet wearing shoes or boots on, and you can swap this with the tiger legs and feet. It's black and nicely detailed with brown laces, but just plain white at the bottom. It has a stitched pattern that looks like waves or clouds. Next are the three drawing knives with nice shiny silver paint and an engraved design. But this detail is only on one side, as the other side is quite plain. You can tie this to a piece of string, but I'd be using this for something else. He has a green wine bottle with an awesome rope pattern at the bottom. This is my second favorite accessory after his hat. My third favorite accessory is this bamboo smoking pipe. It has bronze parts for the chamber, stem, and lip. He also has a brown pouch bag, maybe for gold or money. My least favorite accessory is his cape. The fur part is quite hard, but the rest is made of soft, flexible material. The company name and the year this was produced is embossed in the inner part. There's a hole at the back where you could attach his wooden case, but you need to heat the part up to get it out. You simply attach the wooden case to the cape using a detachable peg. The wooden case has bronze embellishments with a patina effect. I'm not sure if this design means anything but leave a comment if you know. You can see the patina effect at the corners as well. It has movable handles on both sides and a lock at the front. Inside the wooden carry case are Blade Master Wang's dual swords or Dao. The swords have handles akin to a single-handed Qing Dao, which was popular during the Qing Dynasty, while the blade resembles a Dan Dao or Chinese broadsword. 
the pommel and handles are detailed with a tiger head and flowers. The handguard also has engravings. There's also a golden tiger on the blade. Blade Master Wing has a nice silhouette with a bulky muscular body. There's an anatomical balance in his features as a tiger with an anthropomorphic stance. He's got a strong looking back even with a cape on, which falls naturally but with some gaps if you look at the sides. The head sculpt looks phenomenal, and I like how he is portrayed as an old man with scruffy features. The cape is not my favorite part of this figure but I have no complaints in terms of how this is detailed. I'll probably just take it off because it would just limit articulation. There are color mismatches on his body parts and paint bleeds all throughout, and the mold lines can be seen on all four extremities. He has three metal rings on each forearm. I love how his tiny accessories can just hang on his waist armor as it brings a lot of character to an otherwise simple waist. The knee pads are a nice touch, although there are gaps behind his knees that allow better articulation. His feet are the worst part as it lacks the level of detail seen on the rest of the figure and it looks like a mascot's feet or sandals at the back. Putting on the hat creates a new dynamic and adds mystery to this old swordsman. I love the slit where his eyes can slightly peek through. I removed the armor parts so we can clearly see the joints and articulation. I used a hair dryer to warm up the joints, loosen the parts a little bit, and take some armor off. This is the first time I had to do this in an action figure, and I can say that this is quite an inconvenience. Blade Master Wang has a full head rotation with double joints, and his neck can rotate as well. He can move his head side to side and can look down not that much and this much going up. Both arms can go up the sides to make a T-pose and it can turn 360 degrees on the joint. He has butterfly articulation on the shoulders. His biceps rotate as well. He has double joints on the elbows but can only bend around 90 degrees. His hands can do a full turn. I had to whip out my fiancé's hair dryer and heat the hands up every time I wanted to move or swap them up. The hands have a swivel function. His lower abdomen can rotate fully with the ball joint, while the upper torso has some limitations. He has a fairly decent side-to-side -side motion. He can bend his back this much and bend forward to do an ab crunch this much. You can move his hip joints a little bit. His tail connects via ball joint and can rotate and swivel. The tie joints connect to a ball joint and this is when I noticed the damage on his trousers as if the rubber just peeled off at some point. This is real bad in terms of quality but I can easily cut it with a hobby knife. His legs can go side to side but far from making a full split and it can go forward and back this much. At the back, the trouser gets caught on this part and it can be quite tricky to put it back in. His knees have double joints but can really bend considerably more than 90 degrees and you can get a sort of kneeling pose this way because of the anatomy of the legs. The lower part of the leg has a swivel and rotation which gives us a bit of flexibility. Same with his foot which can rotate and swivel as well. Overall, the articulation is quite limited for me. Blade Master Wang is a lot bigger than standard sized 1 to 12 scale figures. He is 22 centimeters or 8.66 inches tall. 
Here how he looks beside SH Figure Arts Bruce Lee and Figma Saber Lily. Here's how he stands with Figma Ronin and Hammett Nettle. The joints on this figure can be very tight. I find myself needing the hair dryer every time I need to move or swap hands and it can be quite annoying. You also need to heat up his armbands and knee guards to take them off. The combination of sharp parts and super tight joints are a literal pain when handling this figure. The paint finish is also inconsistent all throughout. Special attention was given to the head and that's understandable. But as you go down, the paint and details start to decline. You will notice a lot of paint bleed on smaller details and mold lines start to show more. Some parts have thicker paint than others, some parts look like bare plastic, and some have paint chipping. The worst part for me is his foot because the sculpt doesn't match the rest of the figure in terms of detail. It almost ruined the whole figure for me. Luckily, you can swap it out with his shoes, although this design doesn't really work for me and I still prefer the animal feet. I'm also quite disappointed with the articulation because as a bigger figure, I expected more. The elbow and knee bend does not go more than 90 degrees and it limits the poses you can do with Master Wang. The ab crunch is decent but would have loved to see it do more. What I like about this figure is that this is a really unique and interesting design. Most anthropomorphic animal figures in the market look cartoonish, but Blade Master Wang has a more realistic vibe. The Wandering Swordsman look was well done, with small details that tell the story of this character. His head sculpt looks great, and they didn't skip on the detail on his headgear as well. The calm face shows an old kind grandpa with a faint smile, and his scruffy looks befits the title of a ronin. This goes in contrast with his angry face, revealing a fierce tiger who's out to shred you into pieces. I love the creases on his eyebrows and how he bears his fangs. It's as if he went into berserk mode and looks totally badass with his bear claws. They also provided him with enough accessories to play with, like the wine bottle, his hat, and the sword case. He also has a pipe and throwing knives that can all be hung on his belt. Despite having a bulky waist armor and knee pads, this actually don't limit the articulation that much and you can still do a lot of poses. But bear in mind that articulation was not a lot to begin with. His silhouette looks strong and imposing especially without the hat on. His towering presence will surely catch your eye when standing side by side with other 1-12 scale figures. I would be displaying Blade Master Wang like this hats on and the sword case hanging on his chest, and I'm using the sword holding hand so I don't have to swap hands all the time and you can use it to hold the pipe as well. So did the pros outweigh the cons? It was a tough decision because of the tight joints. Having to warm it up to swap and move parts is a real inconvenience. The only workaround I can think of is to keep a pair of hands with multiple uses. There are glaring paint imperfections, although a lot are covered by armor anyway. I love how Master Wang is portrayed as an old warrior and how his story is told through his armor and accessories. I decided to do a couple of shots outdoors and I enjoyed shooting with autumn colors and golden light. I had fun and this made me decide to keep Blade Master Wang. Overall, he has a cohesive look and he certainly imbues the characteristics of a tiger having a strong and imposing look. I just hope Maestro Union improves the joints and paint quality of their future releases, especially with the upcoming rabbit and panda figures. Thanks for watching.
If you enjoyed this video, please comment, like, and share as this will help my channel a lot. Let me know if you want to see more outdoor shots and please hit the subscribe button for more. My name's Al and I'll see you on the next one.